Uh, remember how I told you earlier this week that um, one of my old bosses thought I had a drug problem because of how much I went like this? Oh, but it's just allergies. And Same it was, with my eyes. It was back then. Yeah, everybody else thinks you're stoned. Yeah, I wish. Yeah. Can you imagine being that stoned all the time? I mean, just like if I was this high all the time. My if, mind. if every time I touched my nose, it meant I was high. Ooh. You'd never come down. I'd never come down. Hi, everybody. Hello, hello, hello. So it's been a long week. Woo. I'm just low energy because of how long of a week it's been, but it has been a good week. So don't mistake my low energy for negativity. Woo. The neighbor's car. We're um, just sleepy. Huh? We're just sleepy. It, tired. Yeah, yeah. But um, but it's all good reasons to be exhausted because if you were here last week, you know that we are pushing towards our our film delivering to the Sundance Film Festival. Bear, bear, bear. Scratch, scratch, bear, bear, bear. Insert air horn. <laughs> or or I wish my neighbor would honk their horn right now. That would be so great. So any feeling of exhaustion is a welcome one it's just the way we would feel when we were filming we'd be exhausted but it was a yeah. good exhausted because we knew we were accomplishing something <sighs> so it feels nice um i wanted to offer this up i'm not saying we retire hubie okay so chill don't come for me but i i became obsessed with something this week that I would love to. Are you trying to replace Hubie? I'd like to just throw it out there, and if people want <laughs> to start utilizing it, they can. Um, I don't know if anybody watched the trailer for the movie Dog Gone, which is about a dog that runs away. No. But I'm sure they get him back. It's with Rob Lowe, and that with really... Rob Lowe, the dog dies. Then. No, not necessarily. I think the dog comes back, but also a fun, like young uh, horror fan, actor, TikToker, Johnny Burke told is in it. Really funny dude. Um, but the dog in the movie, his name is Gonker. <laughs> Gonkers. <laughs> Gonkers. Gonkers. So the whole trailer, he's like, Gonker. And they're yelling, <laughs> Gonker. And I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa, that's really good. Whoa. Pause. Rewind. Play. Gonker! It's wild. And then, like, all of the marketing for it is, this summer, you will fall in love with Gonker. And, uh, yeah, it's... Gonker is... Uh, might be the new Hubie. Whoa! To Gonker. <laughs> to Gonker. <laughs> to Gonker. Um, did anybody else watch that trailer? I, am I the only one that watched the Dog Gone trailer? But you need to spell it out. Like, what's the spelling? G O N K E R. G O N K E R. Oh, I'm not typing into anything. G O. -N -K -E -R. Get your gonks on. Like that? Me? <laughs> no. Uh, I can't read from here because I have such bad eyes. But it's oh your keyboard. Your keyboard. Oh my keyboard. My keyboard's broken. Never mind. I'm like, why are those letters happening? Gonker Halloween. Conker is pretty cool. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yes. Hubie. I mean, Gonker. Yeah. Uh, I We're sure bonkers for Gonkers. We are bonkers <laughs> for Gonkers. Gonker the dog. Yeah. The whole, again, the whole marketing around it is Gonker will warm your heart. Where is Gonker? Where's Gonker? Gonker gone? Why did they name? Yeah. Well, then that's the other thing. Why the joke they say of Gonker, gone. Gone. Gonker. Gonker. Gone. Gonker. Gone. How have you not shown this to me? Where did you watch this? Oh, I, I mean, I, you know, it was one of those like uh, toilet watches. You know. What oh I mean? well, you're on your own. <laughs> so, um, and uh, Ken, you're distracted by the He-Man. Well, you know who this is. This is the fortuitous one, and you know. Uh, it's, it's in, it's in the, uh, <laughs> I know, but it is, <laughs> I'm sitting at an exactly perfect spot. He's teetering. Yes, it's true. Um, but that's what the fortuitous one supposedly looks like. So whether or not Onyx is the fortuitous one is up, uh, in question. 
<laughs> remains to be seen. Um, We're I can't read anything. I know. I I, 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 mean, I know. I ordered new glasses. They're on their way. QAB Andy Man, how can I watch the movie at Sundance Online? Is there a special ticket? So uh, here's what you do. I need to remember what our URL is, but if you go to festival.sundance.org, you'll be able to access the program. And then from there, select Midnight. That's our section. You'll see Onyx the Fortuitous, and the whole screening schedule is there. And it even specifies when the online screenings begin. I believe uh, it opens up to online viewers 7 a.m. on the 24th. Um, um, important email just came in. I'll let you read it and update me. Um, so I, I believe you've got to buy tickets for the online screening. And I don't know when those go on sale. Oh, oh, thank you, Hunter. Online tickets for individual screenings are on sale January 12th. Okay. We're doing a little pumpkin thing today with Olivia. I'm green. She's orange. Yeah, I know. And we're both that? in matching. We're in, I have gray mat sweatsuit. You I'm have in black. black. And we both have Nikes on. I don't and this I is, can lift my foot that high. This, oh, is, this is not on purpose, but this happens often. I know it does. Read this. Okay. Do you want to I'll read man the chat. chat? Ask me a question. I'll tell you no lies. Um, oh, oh, I haven't watched the Scream 6 teaser trailer, but this guy will have a lot to say about it. I do have a lot to say Ooh, about Scream 6. I see you. <laughs> um, what are the likelihood of actually getting a premiere seat? Well, I don't know how to answer that. I'll wait for him because it is complicated. Uh, did I change my hair recently? No, I mean, it's back to its natural blonde color. It was red, but it's tucked into my beanie right now. Because um, I had anxiety today and I tend to hide inside of things. I guess we'll leave it for now because I want to talk through some of that with you. Yeah. To make um, sure I'm tracking it all. It's a bit of a confusing email, but yeah. we'll get it. We'll get it. Yeah, seems good. Um, somebody asked if how hard would it be to get a premiere seat? I truly do not know. I Fuck. just, I don't know. I just know that on January 12th, they go on sale. And um, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I am very curious it's to a, find out. It's actually been quite complicated on our end, securing tickets, even just for us. So yeah, we're working it out. Hopefully it all becomes clear. Yeah. And we can direct people in the in the right direction. Yeah. And I, uh, you know, it be uh, will we sell out? Will we not? I, I have no idea. I hope so. I'm so curious. I mean, um I have not had an experience at a festival this large. I was at South by Southwest in 2010. And and I will say, my tiny tiny movie that was there that cost five hundred dollars, we sold out our first two screenings. And then after that, they got a little lighter, but never light to the point of depressing, which I was always thankful for. That's good. I remember leaving South by and being like, even the last screening was more than half full. That's great. And I was like, that's good. That's fine. The first two were packed and it felt good. It was just a theater of like 210 seats, but it was good. Um, Are the online tickets limited? I doubt that. I yeah, can't. I I don't have that question. exact answer, but I can't imagine a world where it is. I, I'm pretty sure that's, yeah. that's you know, film festivals going to online since COVID has rocked the festival world. And it has been depressing and it sucks to not be there in person yeah. the last few years. But it at least opened up, you know, it made it so that movies are now available. And like that infrastructure got built in so that people can watch these festival movies that never could before, which is so rad. I think that's, I think it's it's like a really rad. good thing to come out of it. Um, but I can't imagine, I can't I imagine that it'd be limited. Yeah. I just, I remember thinking when I would read about a, a film at a festival, I'd think, oh my gosh, I mean, I won't be able to see that for seven months, 10 months, a year. And now you can watch it and you can tell your friends to watch yeah. it. I love that. And Nate, can we watch it multiple times and buy multiple ticks? It's hmm. a good question. Like online? That's a good, yeah, I don't, I don't know. know. 
Um, Hopefully by next week we have more answers. I know. I'm so sorry, but there's got to be FAQs like this on the on the Sundance site. We've been so consumed with just finishing the movie, finishing the movie, which I know every week we talk about how we're finishing the movie. But you would be surprised <laughs> how many times you are finishing the movie. It's you're never finishing ending. it for a premix. You're finishing it to submit. Uh, you're finishing it to refresh the link uh, for submission so that people get an updated mix. Should we tell people what we've been doing this week on the yeah, movie? Yeah, totally. Uh, this week we started Color, where we are color timing the movie, which is... Which QAB Andaman just asked, what are the last touches? The last touches right now are we're just tweaking our great visual effects supervisor and artist is finishing the last few shots that need to be in the film. And we're also coloring the movie. Those are kind of the last couple of steps. And then we actually have to make a DCP and have it deliverable, which is, it, it's all... The last like three steps of making finishing this movie and for people that don't know exactly what color does because i find that when i say we're coloring it people think about it in a very simple way but can you walk them through some of what color can actually affect well it's a wide shoot, range of things when you sh i guess that i was trying to think of the way to shoot it when you shoot a movie on these cameras it shoots it in a raw form. So it's kind of like a washed out, very raw, lots of information. And I don't, don't have to go into too much detail, but it's yeah. just, it's kind of like a basic image. And then you have to put the look on it. So while you're filming, you put a LUT on it. What does LUT stand for? I haven't had to think about that. Uh, look. I've, I know oh. this and I'm going to look so bad but, for not knowing But the it. DP, I know, I know I should know this. My boyfriend is a DP, but... Um, the DP ahead of time decides what the LUT will be. And that is basically the look of the film. So it's like, what do the reds look like? What's the contrast look like? What do the blues look like? Is it really bright? Is it really dim? Like all that kind of stuff gets figured out ahead of time. And then they put a LUT onto it that when you're- Look up table. Look up table, which is just all this color information that the camera gets to then to our monitors while we're filming it shows us what it will eventually look like. But then all the raw, footage goes to what we're doing now which is the coloring house which they take that take the LUT and then they actually put it on it so it's it's a really intense delicate um process where amazing talented artists who are colorists and we have a really amazing one working on yeah. our movie takes hours and hours and hours to go through every single scene of the movie and to color it exactly like right now the contrast of my beanie and the contrast of his beanie might not be what the DP wants. So then that colorist goes through and like takes it down, brings it up. Yeah. It, it takes the skin tones. It takes it. It's, it's everything. Um, it's a really big part of what a movie ends up looking like. And it's a great, it's a very exciting place to be because it's pretty much the final step of a movie, which is so nice to finally be here. I don't know if I'm yeah. explaining that correctly. Yeah. It's that complicated. Sounds, that sounds about right. And it's crazy how much, Corrective work can be done. You know, for instance, she wears a green wig in the movie. There might be a scene where the green wig looks like the exact color green we intended. But another scene, we might have cooled it off because, well, actually that scene was too warm on the day, was lit too warm. But then that affects her wig color. So yeah. now all of a sudden you can't change her wig color as much as you would change the environment or setting. Um, so the wig has to be isolated. It has to be windowed out. And yeah. Which is its own thing. <laughs> right. There's a, an opening shot where Onyx is at his computer and uh, and it's it's supposed to be a, a dusk, but it looks a little too bright outside. But the very next scene looks exactly dusk. So the colorist does a little power window on that window and literally like decreases the exposure so that it feels like the right time of day. Like even the image right now. how much work can be done. If this was what the image was that the colorist ended on, he could have put a vignette on this side to yeah. darken it because he wanted the eye, your eye to go to our faces and then windowed out our faces and brought it up and made yeah. our eyes pop. You know, it there's might, different little things. He might bring up the shadows on me because I'm all in black. Yeah, so you have to gray. lift the black so that they don't. So you might isolate me. Disappear. You know, um, it's really tedious. Um, I and, love and we it. did do a lot of day for night, which is great. And we did a lot of night for day. Yeah. And that takes a long time to color. And that's that's a yeah. very, you know, yeah. specific process from start to finish if you're doing day for night or night for day. There's some night for day stuff where 
uh, you see a little bit of daylight creeping in and we need to isolate that and make it more blue instead of it looking like bright daylight. Yeah. Cetera. A lot of movies you watch the, the progression of day to night while you're watching the film. is not how it was shot. Yeah. It gets, that gets dialed in, in the color. Even to timing. the point where I've forgotten. I know. RTP is like, you know, this was day for night. And I was like, it was. Yeah. But you mean like from an interior exterior when you're, Oh, exterior yeah, yeah, yeah. and you're shooting day for night you know what it is you have to like completely different but it's, <laughs> you mean like they cover when, the windows and... when we're inside i lost track of what yeah. time of day it was and i definitely don't remember now um so was well, somebody asked if we submitted through film freeway yeah yeah we said this last week but it bears repeating we submitted this film the traditional way we submitted it through film freeway by their Just deadline here. i took a video of us submitting it yeah Pay yeah, the, the fee, which, like I said, should be encouraging because even I was getting to a point where I was like, is d does w could this matter? Like, do I not do I need some kind of uh, special in? And um, I think the programmers really responded to the film and we are lucky. Someone's asking what Film Freeway is. Oh, Film Freeway is a <laughs> hub for submitting to film festivals. And uh I don't know if they used to be without a box or if they're instead of without a box, but there used to be a website called without a box. Is and that, that's gone there. Isn't it? Yeah, that's Gorn. And I don't know if it became film freeway or if they're separate entities. Yeah. But the only thing is not every festival is on film freeway. Yeah. Um, so it's like how, you know, not every restaurant is on DoorDash. Some might be on Caviar. Well, now oh, they're both all the same. of them are on film freeway. The bulk of them are, but for instance, submitting to South by Southwest fine. is done through, their own website submitting to berlin was done through their website um but holly yeah uh yeah uh don't give up on the traditional routes no oh remind me to tell you i got a really sweet message on twitter today that i wanted to tell you about okay i forgot hmm. um so color vfx we are getting it just before this stream we cut in six or seven shots from a vfx artist that's working on our film um we are so close to being done you know i think we might have talked about this but you you divide a, a movie up into reels so that it's manageable for post-production so that if you make one change in the first 10 minutes of the movie it doesn't affect the entire film that's just reel one you can swap out reel one on the mix stage for sound swap out real one at the color house for color so reels one through six are nearly completed Done. from a visual standpoint from a sound mix standpoint they are the whole movie the whole movie is completed sound mix wise that's what we did last week at the end of last finished week. it last week we did a week and a half of that a few weeks ago and then we just it's not while that we were like they we announced on december 7th and then we had two mixed days of finishing it i know there's no, it, it, it is so dialed in and crunched between now and the festival. I know. Um, it's a really wild, short amount of time to finish a feature film, what we've done. I'm, yeah. If anything. <laughs> yeah. And, um, and our film was, was, was pretty far along. I mean, and, and it's still a push to get this done in time. It's a good push. It's a happy push. But it's push. We sleepy. We're ah, sleepy. We sleepy. Someone says, do, "Can you do a vlog or video at Sundance?" I feel like we will do something. We should at least do a live stream from Sundance. Yeah, maybe we just just do like one. Do it mobile. First, do it on the phone. Yeah, walk around that first from, Friday. That first Friday, because our premiere is not till Sunday. So if we were to do six o'clock Pacific, it will be seven o'clock Mountain. Maybe we'll just pop in for like thirty minutes, seven yeah. o'clock on a Friday. I don't know. Like, a, we're, we want to see other films while we're We've there. We've never yeah. been to Sundance, so it's I've been over. once. Oh, you have. Uh huh. I remember, my friend and I. Oh, went that's right. Had a music video playing at a bar in Sundance. I'm overwhelmed by the idea of going. There's a lot of people, but I would like to see all the movies. Yeah, there's some other really great movies that are playing in the midnight section. I want to see all the midnight movies for sure. We're seeing all of the midnight movies. Somebody said there's only eight of them. Are you the type where the movie will never be finished to your satisfaction? Uh, what were you about to say? Well, I was going to say, I think that's 
that's a difficult thing to say because I think any artist is never satisfied and will always be tinkering in their head with something. Sure. There's nothing I've ever done where I can let it go. You let it go completely. But I think you are really good at being done with something. I think I'm thankful for the amount of internet content I've created, like at Nerdist, when we just had, you know, we had to upload. And um, I got used to letting go at a certain point. Obviously, I I care more about the Onyx film in ways than uh, a parody video we might do. But the truth is, I cared a lot about those parody videos because yeah. I still wanted things to be as well done as they could be, given their format and their you know intention. Who? Um, Oh, where did you say that? Right. No, I didn't because I just what? assume nobody ever remembers who Olivia I am. Taylor Dudley. That's wild. I am. You got to say hi. So I think, um, like with the mix, I think we got to a point where we were like, yeah. we're good. Of course, there's things we would change, but you don't actually expect to change it. So I understand there will always be things I want to change, but I don't expect to change them. I know we will get to a point where it will, we will let go. And actually, the mix got to a place where I was like, You're really good at that. yeah, what's left to be done or what else I would fiddle with? I'm OK with not. Touching. This is how you know, because that last day of the mix, that last half day, there were a few things that were like, can we add this? Can we tweak that? And then you do. And you're like, oh, that doesn't work. We've gone too far. Like you start to go too far. Where you're like, yeah, it's actually done. The It's baked. It's it's totally it's fully done. And it's and nice to be there. I don't think there will be anything missing that people will feel is missing. No. There's some stuff um, that I was like, oh, I wanted to grab that. But it will not be missed. And I know that. Those are the kinds of things that drive you crazy. It's not that anyone watching, I think, will ever know. Yes. Yeah. When I did that thing, Worm, Gallagher was the sound designer, <sighs> who is our sound designer on this. And there's a scene early on in Worm where a fly goes by me. And uh, he did the little, I mean, it's yeah, so he, subtle. He did that in mine. Yeah. In my short. Totally. Yeah. And it's stuff like that that then tricks your ears into thinking this thing's done. Like when you feel a detail that minute represented, you feel like the movie is there. So you'll hear things that, it, that aren't even in. And it's the same with like props and stuff. The more detailed you can get, the kind of more fleshed out the world feels. Yeah. Stuff like this, this painting from the amazing Lucas Kettner. What were you pointing at? I didn't point at anything. Oh. Um, I don't know what you're pointing to. Nothing. Oh. <laughs> um, I could just be pretending to point at things and I'm not actually pointing at things. Right. I hate that I have to get this close to read these. I know. A few um, people on here have said they just watch Worm. Oh, cool. Which is great. Yeah. When and how can I see all the BTS footage, including Olivia's reaction to Sundance? Well, <laughs> maybe we should just put your reaction to Sundance up. I'm worried people will think I abuse you. Because <laughs> I push you into a, the street and into a fence. Yeah, but it's clearly out of excitement. Yeah. It doesn't I really want to cut cut together a thing with everybody's reactions, but we'd have to get permission to post that. But we could post mine. That would be that would be so fun. Um cool. That'll be fun. I'm gonna say the eleventh because I like that number. Yeah that's chill. Is that chill? Well let's yeah. do a day of the week. Oh and we need to sign up for that that's mixer. a Wednesday. That's chill. Do you want to say that works for me and Bals? Or I can respond. No, I can that? say that. Okay. Um, Holly, do did you hire a publicist? Another great question. And yes, we did. And I tell you, it makes a world of difference. I mean, I learned this. <laughs> Nate, online ticket sales for Onyx is going to be gonkers. <laughs> <laughs> It is Gonkers. I mean, I hope it's Gonkers. I hope Gonkers is at Sundance. Is that how, is that the proper use of this word? Is that how you say it? I know. Yes, but it does sound weird, but it's just one of those things. 
Should I say Liz? Yeah, it's Jill. Or is it Bowser and I? No, me and Bowser. Mm -hmm. And bad, I think, and bad. No, I think it's bad. it always goes the other person first. Doesn't matter. No, it's a matter of if you took out the other person, what would you say? Either of those work for me, or would you say either of those work for I? Oh, that's the rule I always go by in my Dang, life. Dude. I don't know. That's the rule I, I always have out of my head. Nice so um, I even though it was a tiny movie, but at South by in 2010 had a tiny movie, had a, had a publicist that was amazing and um wait what was the question uh, did we hire a publicist oh and and uh, they were they were they were very important and they will be very important on this project as well publicists are super important i have my own publicist team but we the film has a, you have to hire publicists for the film itself yeah which is super great and we have an amazing team working on it yeah Wait, now Ken is saying it's Bowser and I. That's what I thought. Oh, no. <laughs> it's oh, geez. It doesn't matter. Everyone knows I don't know how to do these things. <laughs> um, Bowser and I. Either. Well, nobody here saw the full sentence. That's true. <laughs> you can be as right as you want to be. I'm fucking right. Just kidding. Um. Can you read it for me? Which one? Any of them. Yeah, but it's like an eye test. It is. It's like one it's of like, those can things. Can you read this? Some of them I can read. Um, slime green attire. Oh my gosh. Oh, Should I get? Well, huh. We haven't Oh yeah. Literally Should I show now? those now? <laughs> they're literally almost showing right now. No, they're not. That's my thing. Oh, it's the same color. They are peeking a little bit. They're peeking a little bit. There's some um, Sundance merch. Yeah. Did somebody say Sundance merch? No. Oh, yeah. Somebody said neon green attire. I know. Should I get a slime green suit? Nope. We talked about this. I know. I'm not doing any bits. I've been sending him I need to look like clothes. a real person at Sundance. But let me ask you this. Cool jacket, right? Like yeah. we've been talking about. I think you should have two cool jackets. Two cool you jackets. Need a cool jacket you can wear inside, and another cool jacket that you can wear outside because it's gonna be cold. Okay, copy. But let me flip this your way. Okay. What about cool jacket with a dumb good nightmare on Elm Street hoodie underneath? Yeah, I mean. At some point. That's not the vibe order, the whole time. We should order new hoodies. For sure. We should order dumb good hoodies from other nights. We should get them for sure. <sighs> That'd be great. <laughs> but you know what I mean? Not the whole time. Yeah. That can be one of my vibes, sure. right? I am a horror guy after all. You are. But I also need to just But like be, for our Q and A's and stuff, maybe. Maybe I am. Maybe that's the vibe. I or for know. press, is that the vibe? No, for press, I don't. I'm not going to tell you what to do. I don't tell anyone what to do. You will I'm, weigh in I'm on this a stylist. thousand times over. Yeah, of course I will. Yeah, but publicly, I don't want Sunday. people to think I tell you what to do. <laughs> <laughs> well, then as soon as the stream's jacket, over, you can tell I me. I think exactly. that jacket idea I sent you the other day was good. Which one? The one of. Oh Hulk? yeah, dude. But something felt a little... Not with that cut. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But well, I just mean like the shoulders being leather. That's what I mean. Not with this cut right here. Yeah, it was that too felt much, a little like but everything else is 15 or something. Like the, the collar. Yes. And like the fit. But isn't it too on the nose for me to wear black? Shouldn't I use this opportunity to wear color? I already told you. I think we should stick... You should stick to like brown... Neutral colors like black and brown and stuff. And then have pops of color like this. Because that's what you do. Have one thing, your nails. We got to figure out what nail color we're going with. I've been Should thinking we have about that. Nails for sure. Neon green? Should we just you said back? I shouldn't do neon green for some No, Sundance. I said you should for your nails. I said for your hats and your nails should have pops of color. I think I need I think I need to do neon green. And I would love it if you had neon green too. Yeah. Black. Um, I have black. It's either neon green or black for me. Well, you know how many times you have bailed on getting a specific color? I got green this week, but they're sparkly and dark. Love them. Um, these are good questions, Brian. I'm going to answer your question. Um, can <laughs> if you if you can commission that jacket for me, I'll wear it. Um, Shackleford, did I know that I have the second most views on the Meet the Artist video? Oh, cool. Wait, where's that? It's on the Sundance channel. Oh, yeah, I haven't peeked. Is at that it the yet. one that we did the other day right here? Okay, was different? No, I did it by myself. Oh, that's but the then one. I edited it at your house. Um, okay. Somebody said, 
Um, does the Sunday, uh, Brian, does the Sundance premiere and potential distribution make it more complicated to release the movie to Kickstarter backers? Now, here's what I'll say. Since the beginning, we have a list of how many online screeners have to be shown to the backers, how many VHS tapes, and how many Blu-rays. Those numbers will be in the conversation with the distributor. There's no, they know that this movie was partially kickstarted. Um, it's going to be discussed. And I think that in this day and age, in 2023, it'll be. Oh, God. <laughs> distributors know that a lot of independent films are kickstarted. The last time I felt like I was on planet Earth was in 2019. <laughs> Where have you been since then? I don't know. <laughs> Just around. Um, it's an 800 number. Um, so that's all I can say. We uh, will be having those conversations with distributors. And it's very much known that this movie was partially kickstarted. Yes. Yeah. And I've talked to filmmakers who have had distribution deals for films that were kickstarted. And it's worked out. It's worked. I've out. done two movies yeah. that were distributed with yep. our Kickstarter. Yeah, we have a VHS copy of one of those movies on the shelf. I'll do shameless. I'll, 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 I'll do shameless self promotion. <laughs> yeah, do it. There you go. You should check out my movie, Dubro Party Massacre Three. Yeah, you can watch it everywhere. You can watch it everywhere, but here's a sweet fucking VHS copy. No big deal. Let me but see this it. was kickstarted. I think that's me in the back. I've actually never looked at the VHS. Yeah. So that's my character. That's yeah. <laughs> I don't know if we've ever put this in the thing. Oh, we should. Yeah, we should watch it. Or at yeah. least have it on. For sure. But distributors know how to do that now. How to, yeah. work, how to work that out. Yeah. With Kickstarters. Holly, what's your dream distribution? I honestly couldn't say. Because it's also, it's just so different now. I don't know. It changes every six months where anyone wants to be. <laughs> yeah, I truly don't know. Oh, Danny, good question. How much money went into the film after the Kickstarter? You know, I'm truly not at liberty to say. Our total budget, A, it's still being tallied, really. Yeah. It will be made public at a certain point. That we I think at a certain point it will. You can't really do that until it's been bought. Yeah. You don't really want to talk about budget specifics until the film has been purchased. Um, but yes, we do have a sales agent. Hunter. XYZ. Yes, Hunter. They're amazing. Think about how many. I mean, I don't know about y'all. But think about how many movies you've watched that has started with an XYZ logo. I know a lot that I like start with an XYZ logo. Some of the best genre movies that come out in the last 10 years are XYZ movies. And we're so excited yeah. to be working with them over the moon. They've worked with so many great filmmakers in different capacities, sales agents, production, financing, management. And I sat down to watch a documentary the other week called Clay Dream. Without me. Without Olivia. I've been waiting to watch it for so long. I would watch it again. Sure. Uh, yeah, and it opens with an XYZ logo. Yeah. No surprise. They really know. Um, whoop, that's also not a surprise. Nope, I spill everything. Oh, no, there's beer everywhere. Oh, it doesn't matter. It's well, the couch. It doesn't matter to you, but it's on my butt. Oh, it doesn't matter. Get over it. I use a kidding. shirt. You can pull anything off of that rack, and, and as long as it's not one of like the Hero Onyx things. Is this, this is not Hero because it has nope. a tag. That's fine. Um, they're great. They're great. We feel I feel so honored to be have our movie repped by them. So yeah, I think I have. We have the best situation. Man. Sundance X Y Z. We have amazing publicists. Really, like people that really like the movie, really get the movie. Um, somebody said, did they come on board before Sundance or after? Good question. Um, Nobody we, knew who we were before then. <laughs> <laughs> we did that. Well, XYZ knew you and knew me. Oh, we know certain people at the company. Yes. yes but, but we did not attempt to get a sales agent or even reach out to XYZ 
until the Sundance acceptance. Yeah. So all that happened after. Because truthfully, I mean... It's hard to until you get into yeah, the festival. You really need, you know, the movie needed a vote of confidence. Mm -hmm. And that vote of confidence came from Sundance. And Where is this I will never stop artist? being thankful for that vote of confidence. No. Um, this is the one you edited at my house. So it was the one... Sundance. I can't spell. You'll have to go to their YouTube channel because I think it's like unlisted and it's only embedded on their website. So just if you go to their Sundance YouTube channel. Do you have the YouTube app? Oh, yeah. My Lord. <laughs> I'm on YouTube all day long and I still don't use it correctly. Go to videos. Meet the artist. Scroll Where's my boy? Down. I don't know. Where is he? Oh, there he is. Oh, there he is. <laughs> I want to mute something real quick because I want to tell you a funny story about that video. <laughs> Andrew, do you get to put a Sundance? No, you know what's going to happen? What? He's going to be like, fuck off. <laughs> How many people like when we tell secrets? <laughs> um, no, I was, I was, I was talking about something technical that I messed up in my Meet the Artist video, but it's okay. It's nothing in it. It all notice. turned out fine. It's nothing anybody would notice. But you know, there's clips of the movie in there. Oh Jesus! <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Um. Well. Thanks, Geo. I, 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 yeah. Tried to kind of get as much info in there as possible. <sighs> well, you know, Hunter, I don't know what awards Onyx will be up. For for because i don't think we're in competition in the yeah, midnight midnight section. section i don't think it's a proper competition yeah but what's funny is the midnight section is normally where it pops off at sundance yeah you mean like party style oh i just mean like people <laughs> oh. no i just mean like films that come out of the month the midnight section at sundance are ones that people fucking can i watch. can you i get... say <sighs> yeah keep talking because i'm probably about to say something that you didn't say. no well i was just gonna second what you said it is so fun to be a part of that section and in a way um, less intimidating because we're a small crew of films. So we're not in a sea of other movies. Yes. Like the dramatic competition. Of course, one day we would love to have a film in dramatic competition at Sundance. Amazing. Um, but to be in the midnight section is so fun and in a way a little less pressure because we're just the ragtag group of eight films. Mm -hmm that represent genre on a certain level. And I, I don't know, I think it's so cool. And if any, I don't know if it'll be like this at Sundance, but I imagine it will. A lot of times, whatever section you're in, that kind of becomes who you're socializing with that week. Yeah. Not always, but if the other filmmakers are there, we're going to be at a mixer. You're in the midnight section? Us too. What are your, what's yeah. your film? Well, that's what well, happens. This is our film. And that's what happens. And then I bet. And then you get your little crew for the week, even outside of your film, and you support each other, you go to their screenings, you post about people going to, you say, go see this movie. I just saw it. It's great. And it's a really encouraging atmosphere. And I can only imagine it's, it's that times a thousand at a place like Sundance. Yeah. Which brings so many filmmakers together. Um, Whoa. So Got your plane ticket book. That's great. Hell yeah. I just booked mine today. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I'll be driving a SUV full of puppets. The puppets are coming to Sundance. The puppets are coming. The puppets are coming. <laughs> the puppets are coming. Some of them. Some of them. Not all of them. We couldn't fit them all in 
The one car. Yeah, you're trying to get us to take all the puppets? You can't take all the puppets. You can't fit all the puppets in a car? No. You kind of. No, goddamn Santa. Uh, Santa. Santa. <laughs> you kind of could. I have not even gotten a quarter through my beer. I can't finish my whiskey. And I'm so, but I'm so tired. Uh -huh. I'm so loopy. It feels a bit like Ooh, drinking at the get end. Get some super fancy business cards, Andrew. Well, I got them. <laughs> <laughs> That's the end of that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I got them. Well, I got them. I don't um, think you're going to hand out business cards. Yeah, right, dude. Whatever, dude. You uh, will be surprised. You'll hand them out. Well, whatever. What? Nothing. You still hand out business cards. Actors don't have to worry about that as much. <laughs> <laughs> Not you're, that you're, it, man. you're just known. I know, I know. We should get some business cards. No. Ah! I like to be mysterious. People can find me. Yeah. I can't be. I got to be like, hey, <laughs> you want my number? You want my name and number? Here you go. Your name and... Well, never mind. My name and number? What? Ha-ha! <laughs> That's Don't true. That. <laughs> Does that. I'm that. Like um, American Psycho status of business cards. I know that's the thing that plays through my mind. Every time you send me an idea for a business card, when you're sending me the like mock ups, all I Tony Cooper's about. here. I have business cards thanks to Tony. Did he design them? Uh huh. They look fucking great though. I know. And, um, how many did you get? I think I had like 500. Okay. That's decent. <laughs> Let me just say this I was worried you got like 3,000 business cards. No. First of all, I'll have them through all the festival run that we'll it, hopefully we get into other festivals too. I hope somebody else will take us. Yeah. But just know this when I was at Sundance for nothing, for a music video that I did. Did you direct it? Yeah. Oh. It was a Butch Walker music video. How do I not know this? It was not well, at Sundance we... proper, huh? Oh, okay. It was like when we say the thing is say you're alone. Not yeah. alumni. Oh, no. Okay. It was no. not Sundance proper. No. Was it Slam Dance? No. Sorry. It was a guy at a bar who wanted to show 10 music videos while Sundance was happening. So I sent him a DVD of the Butch Walker video. Okay. But my friend was like, dude, you're at Sundance. And I'm like, nope, it's not. It's a guy at a bar showing music videos. And he was like, we got to go. And I'm like, just <laughs> no, we're not in Sundance. He's like, whatever. Let's go see movies. We'll go to that bar when they play your music videos. Music video. We go to the bar. It's not playing. And my friend goes to the bartender. And he's like, there's supposed to be a screening of music videos. And the guy was like, yeah, I don't know. The DVD player's not working. <laughs> and my friend made him play it. And he finally got it to play. But there was like a band playing. So it was just playing oh, no. on mute. And I was sitting there and I was like, well... And this was what, 2006, I want to say, 2005? Uh, oh, God. It's pretty true. Oh, days wow. until some bands. No, I don't keep headshots in my car. But this is my point. You ready? I don't even know what my headshots look like. This is my point. Ready? Hmm. I was at a bar at Sundance as a nobody. Still a nobody, but I just mean. You're not a nobody. Well, I just mean. I was very much more of a nobody. There's 107 people who know who you are. Hell yeah. 108. There's 7,493 people that help make the movie. <laughs> people forget, I think, that I have that tattoo, so I don't think this means anything when I go like that, when I talk about the number. It talks about it a lot. Yeah. Um, the point is, I was sitting at a bar, and somebody came up to me and was like, are you the guy from the Boxcar Racer music video for Letters to God, which was a music video I did as a contest that I won, and the prize money got me my first Mac and Final Cut Pro. Is the story that boring? <laughs> I'm sorry. Email's important. We're finishing <laughs> a goddamn movie. Sorry, your producer's checking the She's emails. She's a watch Jesus checker. Fuck. She's a watch Would checker. Would you rather maybe do this? No, I'd rather just listen to the story. So look, so look, let me finish my anecdote. Jesus. <laughs> I'm not an Apple Watch guy, so I don't have the he sympathy makes fun for of people me. to check and it the, all this the time. is the only thing that keeps my ADHD in check. Okay, let me finish this story. Ready? See? It's not working. <laughs> <laughs> my point is, somebody came up to me and said, are you the guy from the Boxcar Racer music video? And I was like, yeah. I'm like, oh my gosh, that's so great. You were great in that. I loved the video. I'd love to email you and talk about whatever, whatever, whatever. And I had nothing. 
because I was there as someone that didn't think they would need any business card or anything. My point is, if that can happen in 2006 or seven, having made like two music videos, I should have business cards at this year's Sundance because you never know who will want to have a conversation with you at a bar. And guess what, Olivia? I don't have an agent. <laughs> I told you yes to the business cards. I said yes, and you're like, should I get these? I was like, yeah, they're dope. I know. But you know what I realized, Tony? The internet was different in 2006, though, just you know. <laughs> Very different, I know. I literally just sold a story as that started with, so when I was a dinosaur, <laughs> Tony, I might need to send you a different logo. I think I might have sent you a low-res logo. Oh, typical. I choose to say this on stream. I know. Do you get nervous when you have to do q and I love doing q and I love doing q and They're my favorite. That's where I thrive. Same That's so here. much better than just like ordering a coffee at a coffee shop. That makes me shit myself. But I will talk all day to a light in my face and people I can't see about a movie I've made. I look forward to that. Me too. You want to know something cringe? <laughs> sure. <laughs> I'll answer fake questions like on my hike, you know? I know. Do. I know you know. I'm saying it as if it's new you information. It. <laughs> I'll Explain be on my to hike. Them what that means? <laughs> I'll be on my hike. I I try to hike every day. That's why my cheeks are rosy. Because I got a little sun. Because it's kind of sunny today. Because you don't wear sunblock, idiot. So I'll be on my, my hike, listening to oh I don't know only Coheed and Cambria. And then I'll get a thought in my head about a QA and a or a question where somebody asks about like the themes in the Onyx movie or whatever. And I'll pause my music and be like, you know, it's interesting that you asked me that because I do think thematic. You know, you're live, is, right? You know, I know. I don't people. mind being this honest. And then I just answer the question. And today I think I answered like 15 minutes of questions walking down the hill out loud. But it's good practice. I think a publicist would tell you to do that. I mean, I've had a lot of publicists. I've done a lot of Q and A's and had a lot of media training, and they do. No one has ever said to do that. You know what? Just like in acting, you're not supposed to look at yourself in the mirror. And, you know what? And practice lying. When I knock a question, I'm just kidding. Now you know when I, you, I've done it too. So. <laughs> What's funny is, is those questions don't get asked. You are so right. Can you say that again for the people in the back? <laughs> Olivia Taylor Dudley was so right. Um, Do you need to get that? No. I think she knows I'm doing the stream. Let me text. Um, so you're so right, though. The questions I come up with are the ones that I want you to want answer. You want to answer. That's what I mean. <laughs> Nobody ever asks the ones you want to answer. I have like at Comic-Con, when we get asked questions for magicians, yeah. it was never the question that I wanted to answer. What was an example of a question you'd want to answer? Somebody asked me a deep question about Alice Quinn, about my character. Yeah. And it would be like, where is the costume? <laughs> it, like, it's not it's not what you want it to be. But some, well, every, every now and then, somebody will throw you a question that is what you want to answer. But then there'll be questions that you never thought you'd ever even think about that are amazing that'll come your way. If you were... You're going to have a... Great Q and A. If you were an audience member at the Austin, at the Austin, at the Onyx movie, sounds like Austin. Onyx. <laughs> the Onyx movie. Ask, ask me a question. What would be the first question? The credits roll, and there's pressure because no one's raising their hand, so you feel bad, and you raise your hand. Anybody have a question out there? Does anybody have a question? Yes, the lady in the orange hat. How did you get such a hot woman to play Farah? <laughs> JK. It's That's a good JK. question. Um, sorry, I'm trying to read. Oh, no. I can't do this alone. What questions would you guys ask? Well, you haven't seen the movie, so I guess that's an unfair question to ask you to ask a question about something you haven't seen. But yet. I think people could come up with the questions. Well, Why don't you turn it around on me? Because I have a good question for you. Oh, um, thank you guys for watching the film. Um, any questions? Yeah. Um, how did you get such a hot guy to play Honix? <laughs> that was obviously he was the only one who said yes. <laughs> Can you read this? If I get closer, I can. Betty or Wilma? That's a good question. 
That also, I feel like that question has actually sent us off in outer space once this week. <laughs> I think I might be a Betty boy. <laughs> you okay? Mm. Um, uh, thank you, Tony. <laughs> the 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 low I, it's just that the logo I sent you had grain on it already. This is not anything that stream cares about. And I have a clean logo. I should have sent you the clean logo. I messed it up. Um oh, how conscious of a decision or must was it to have a non-binary character in the film? That's a good question, Elijah. Yeah. Ooh. Well, I think that's a question you could get in a Q and A. It is a question you can get in a Q and A. I guess as the writer, I would answer, and I would also want Rivka to weigh in as the performer behind the character. But I will say this: when I started writing the Onyx movie, I thought I'm going to write an Onyx horror comedy. I pictured gore. I pictured kills. I pictured it's an Evil Dead type of movie. And then I started writing it, and it did not become that. And one of the main reasons was, and I would not give this long of an answer at the Q and A. You don't can. Have to give me You're training. the director. You can do the fuck you want. But I want to be one of those concise directors with my answers. We'll see. I can't wait <laughs> to get the notes from you after Q and As. That's going to be wonderful. Are my notes not helpful in your life? No, they're very helpful. But can you imagine we go back and we're all high from the uh, attention and electricity, and you're like. I will give you notes. I know you will. I'm looking forward to it. It'll be a blast. That's a good situation to be in. <laughs> um, anyway, I started trying to write an ensemble script with characters that were disposable. I thought there's got to be a dumb jock that I don't like and that Onyx doesn't like so we can kill someone. And then I couldn't find the motivation or inspiration to write it, those characters. It just wasn't the world of Onyx. It wasn't the world of Onyx. And what I realized was the movie was going to be about him finding a friend group and, you know, a family. And inherent, I think, to Onyx's outlook on life is inclusivity. And uh, so it became very natural and very organic to represent people of all different orientations and experience to be his crew yeah so it's very natural and very organic very organic and i want more and more of it i want to explore these other characters in a sequel and i want everybody to be respected and I, we actually heard from somebody on the festival side that that's one of the things they liked about the movie that the movie loved its own characters which is like a dream come true considering all the work that went into that's genuine on this side of things right I couldn't believe that insight. Uh, uh, we, we should we should expect something like that because obviously the festival is a very, very smart festival. But that's true. The movie loves its characters. In a way, it even loves its villains. I hope so. Yeah. No, it does. It does. No one is thrown away for a gag. No one is, and this is no offense to a movie that puts somebody into a wood chipper, but nobody's tossed into a wood chipper for the sake of the shock or the gore payoff. I just happen to like these people too much. <laughs> Was it a conscious decision to hire a Kristen Stewart lookalike? You know, it's so funny because out of all the people that people have said you look like and that you've even said you think you look like, the Kristen Stewart one Oh, I can make myself look misses like that. Stewart. Misses me. When I, I have know, dark but... hair and my hair is pulled to one side. I'd, and I dropped my jaw. I out. literally just looked up and I was like, Kristen Stewart. Yeah, I can do it. I don't, I'm not perfecting it right now, but I've played her in things. That was that hair flip was the move. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I got it then. Um, but so that, I guess, to answer your question. Um, Whoa. Which one? Beverly D'Angelo? Yeah. Oh, I've gotten that a lot. I've gotten that my whole life. Mostly I get Patricia Arquette, which is like the best. Yeah. 
Uh, but Beverly D'Angelo I've gotten my whole life, which she's incredible. And then I I did that table read with her. Yeah. At Schwartzman's house. And it blew my mind because just even looking at her, it felt like I was looking into a mirror of some kind. I do see the resemblance there. Uh, she's can, wonderful. Ken, you're saying who's Beverly D'Angelo, the wife from all the National Lampoon Vacation movies. Yes. Somebody said, um, oh, Nate. The Sundance video shows Onyx's mom. Oops. That was supposed to be a surprise. Andrew? Hey, I cut that video before we had a sales agent or a PR team. I was rogue, okay? I was going rogue. <laughs> uh, David, you think Olivia looks like Lizzie Kaplan? Oh, thank you. Where, thank you. Where, 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 where are, are, where you, are you, David? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Lizzie's one of the greatest loves of my life, so that's a really huge compliment, and I do relate deeply to Lizzie Kaplan, so thank you. Yeah. Ellie worked with her and loved her. She's wonderful. Yeah. I met her and melted into the floor. And Nate, you think OTD looks like the actor that plays Onyx's mom? I would agree. Oh, I mean, yeah, that's a thing. That is a thing. She's been getting that for years. Yep. And, uh... We had a we had a pitch that had Barbara and you as mother and daughter. Yeah, actually, two pitches that had you as mother and daughter. It's not too late. It's not too late. We can take those pitches with us to Sundance. Do you even? It's remember also that not script? too late to just think about Lizzie Kaplan all night. Yeah, that's true. It's not too late. You can start doing that now. I am. <laughs> I am. <laughs> when. <laughs> What? I mean, this is you guys get to put some promo things. Ooh, boy, boy, boy. Do you get to put a Sundance logo on promos and film copies? Hmm. Ooh, Bob, does your movie have a powerful allegory? Oh. Um, as far as the Sundance logo, yeah. I we think got we the can... laurels delivered to us. Yeah. It's on our poster. It's on our poster. But we haven't premiered the poster yet. I think we'll try to have like a... The, the promotional materials are a slow rollout. Um, yeah, Sundance has their own specific guidelines as far as announcements go, and then we have our PR team that is making that plan right now. So yeah, but it's so incredible to have a Sundance laurel even just on our poster. I know. I tell you, one of the most exciting things was to put that laurel on our poster. Yeah, I think after the new year, you're going to be seeing Onyx stuff pushed out. Our PR team knows what they're doing and they're going to be very smart in how we deliver clips. Yes. The poster reveal, cast reveal. Um, it'll be really, really fun to see that stuff come out prior to the festival. And maybe we'll try to make a, you know, Onyx viral video or two, huh? Yeah. Did you like that. that? How awkward that was? Yeah. Huh? Well, that reminds me. It's, what? It's uh, the end of where it's snowing right now. Where? I'll show you. Um. Oh. Well, nice. No, St. I've never been to Michigan. I'm not actually from Michigan. I'm so sorry. I am from Maryland. Shannon Sossman. Shannon Sossman look alike. Look, I don't think interesting. He looks, like, sh Shannon and I look nothing alike, but energetically, I can see there's something in there, in the darkness of our souls. Yeah. Oh, maybe the squinty eyes. Yeah, that's true. I would. I think I. I can see it. That's wild. Though. It's never happened before. Yeah. I respect. That. I tell you, Alex, the Grammy Boy saga. I mean, he's upstairs right now, and living, he's probably living, living the life. Fat boy. Fat boy. Uh, I, I, I'm gonna see if I have a picture of him. That's. Do you have a wide angle lens? Because that's the only way to capture it. Grammy's got that booty. Grammy, he's got that booty. He's a little <laughs> thick boy and we love it. He only lets me pet him while I'm feeding him because he's distracted by eating food. But just know that Grammy boy, I, when I think about him being the same cat that was back there in the walls yelling. I video, by the way. Of us extracting this him. This week, yeah. We extract, should put that video. Extracting him. We should put that video on Netflix and call it Extraction 3. I'm pretty sure we'll get yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, allegory. Lynn, what movie should you watch tonight? I started Come True. 
And I haven't finished it, but I was enjoying it. So I would offer up Come True. I watched Something in the Dirt. Oh, you, you watched watch, Something in the Dirt? Would you recommend? Justin and Aaron made. Justin Benson and Aaron Moore had made. And, yeah. Uh, another XYZ film. Yeah. I do recommend it. I loved yeah. it a lot. It was a vibe. I watched it at like four o'clock in the morning and I yeah. tripped out on it. So that's a fun one. The allegory of the film, I would love for people to kind of just discover. I don't know that I should state it outright. No. I think you should. I think there's a couple of things going on in it. But I also think it's just silly goof -em ups But there is a little allegory. You have little Halloween heads tonight. I know. I said that earlier, but it was when you were looking at your watch. Whatever. I heard you. <laughs> I went away on my watch. <laughs> um... Somebody said... Could Grammy still fit in the wall? <laughs> that's such a good question. Nate, that's actually a really good question. I don't know that he could get... No, he could. He, like, turned to jello whenever he needed to get into small spaces. I will never forget. Do you remember this? I got him out of the wall. I dropped a piece of wood paneling behind so that he couldn't get back into the wall. I duct taped it. And then I went upstairs for 10 minutes... And when I came back, the duct tape had been pulled off <laughs> and he had gotten back into the wall. And there was fur all around the oh, duct this tape. This is giving me so much fucking, fucking heartburn thinking about he, how he fucking got, good at things he is. He is a he's raptor. Ruined, he's ruined months of our lives. Well, I don't know that chat knows, but it's in the past now, but that he got out a couple of months ago. Knock on wood. And he was gone for six weeks. And that took over me, you, and your wife's life. Took it over. It was all literally be like, I missed a meeting. Sorry, I'm trying to trap Grammy. I mean, we all probably lost jobs over that. <laughs> I don't think we were doing the live stream a lot during that time mm -hmm. because it was when we were in like the heat of editing and yeah. But he got out for six weeks. Did we show you? Like, I caught him in a trap, a, a million, drop trap. A million security cameras were set up around the neighborhood. I had 12 security cameras. <laughs> Ken, yes. What? If he gets out again, Whoa! don't say that. He Whoa! won't. Put his litter outside. We did try that. Dude, this cat is not normal. I hate to say it. This Cats cat normal. was like... There were so many experts weighing in from all over the United States, and it didn't make a damn. It, But, but Ken, I think you would... L I think, Ken, you would love to know how we got him back. It was a slow process of feeding him outside and then eventually get getting him closer to this drop trap and then me being in the minivan with a string rigged to the drop trap. I think you did put that on. I don't know if I uploaded the video. Uh. Then we pull in the string and then I couldn't get out of the minivan because it had all electronic doors. Okay. It's 7.03. Yeah. You so you did it. do a stream from the van. I did I a stream from you the You did. Mm -hmm. Wow. Hey, life. It's a blur. Okay. Life is um, a blur. Bye. It's a blur. Bye. We, yeah. Hi, Bugs Bunny. Dim. This is That's so exactly nice. It's happens. so nice hanging out with you guys. It's really on a nice. Friday evening. Yeah. At the end of every week to have this time to kind of decompress and think about the week. It's lovely. Thank it's you. lovely. We will keep you updated. Um, but again, festival.sundance.org. Look at the program. I think tickets go on sale January 12th. And if anyone has finds out magical ways and good streamlined ways to get tickets to the premiere and online and all that, everyone should be sharing that with each other and stuff because yeah, a lot of people are trying to go and see these movies. So yeah. Yeah. All right. Thank you again for hanging out, y'all. We will talk to what you. What are we supposed to say? We're supposed to say gonkers. Gonk. No. Is it gonkers? Gonkers. Gonkers. Remember that fucking season of our life where you said bonkers? Bonkers. Every two when seconds. When I said it like that or I just said no, bonkers no, or bonk no, bon bonk bonk is fine. Bonk or whatever. But like, but the way you say it. Bonkers. I hate it. You used to say that I said that good. You do say it good, but then you said it 500,000 more times. Bonkers. No. Dot UK. That part hasn't, that hasn't got old yet. Oh, it hasn't? The dot UK? Mm -mm. <laughs> You're still all in on that. <laughs> okay. Uh, Have check a good weekend. us out at Bowser Vids. Don't you <laughs> Um, no, so do that with the Sundance one. Oh, go to festival.sundance.uk. No, <laughs> dot don't org. Go don't go there. Yeah, join us next week where we'll be reviewing Gonkers Gets Gonked. Oh, God. Okay, everybody. 
Thanks again. Talk to you soon. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Dumb.